What's up, everybody? It is your boy, Levon Kaysen, back at it again with another video. Today, I'm going to be viewing some gameplay of Watch Dogs Legion with ray tracing on the 299 Xbox Series S. And the gameplay has come from Tom Wharton. So, let's begin. Okay, so it is a 1080p60. Uh, the gameplay? It doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look all that bad. The Xbox Series S version, you know, it looks pretty decent. I mean, you can tell that the ray tracing is like somewhat of a lower quality, but... Hey man, it works. It's a pretty decent playable version. For $300, this does not look all that bad at all. It really does not. That's impossible. Run it again. Shut up. You're under arrest. protecting people. I'm guessing the resolution is probably like, what, dynamic 1080p? Or something like that at 30 frames per second. Or maybe it's full 1080p. Maybe it is. Okay, so this is the Series X version. And it really does look better. It does look better. Hmm. Okay. I'm curious to see what uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla looks on the series list as well. But yeah, you can tell that there's a difference. You can tell. Especially with the ray tracing, as far as, you know, comparing the Series S and the uh, um, Series X version. You can definitely tell. Alright, so that's pretty much it. So, Watch Dogs Legions, it looks, you know, pretty decent on the Xbox Series S. 
But you can tell that it does look better on the Xbox Series X. Like, you can definitely tell. Here's the thing. If the Series S was a last generation system, because a lot of people say that the Series S, you know, it's on par with the PS4 Pro and all that other stuff, then why isn't the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X is not getting this new Suicide Squad game? Like, come on, people. Come on. The Series S can hold its own when it comes to uh, cross-generation titles. Now, the interesting thing will be that the next generation only games, you know, how will those games run on the Xbox Series S? Because as of right now, you know, the Series S is doing a pre pretty decent job because, you know, there's going to be games that will be releasing on the next generation consoles and the last generation console. And the Series S, when you really think about it, is really this middle ground. You got you guys get what I'm saying? Like, it's um, in between of last generation and next generation. Being, you know, it has the CPU, it has the SSD, but... It has a, the new RDNA 2 architecture on the GPU. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the Series S will hold up, you know, three years from now, four years from now. Will the games, you know, get, res get lower resolutions? You know, we, you know, will they just go to um, xCloud? Like, will you just be able to play the new next-gen games just on xCloud? Like... And also, too, xCloud is coming on the Xbox One, so in a way, you really don't need a next-generation console if you're playing on Xbox's ecosystem because of xCloud, which will allow you to play next-generation games on the Xbox One X or the Xbox One S. And also, too... You know, the Xbox, the Xbox Series X will be used as servers. So you're just streaming it off a server instead of, you know, running it natively on that hardware. So the Xbox Series S is an interesting console. It, it really is. Cause we know how the story goes with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. The PS5, you know, it's a true next generation system. The Xbox Series X, yes, it does. It is the most powerful console out there, but it doesn't have any software to back it up. And it'll probably have that software in two years, but the question is, will people care? That's the real question right there. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Peace, and I hope you guys have a good day.